Shalom and welcome back to the Code Searcher. And you're and it's just one of me in the, in here, uh, not two. But I'm also joined by Scott. Uh, you guys, um, some of you may know that I've been sitting on some codes. I uh, didn't want to share on YouTube. This is one of them, but it's not not so um, um, inflaming, if you know what I mean. It's 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 something that's um, it's okay to talk with, talk about, I guess. And not that I care anymore. I really don't care. I, 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 you know, I may just start posting these things on YouTube and if they take me down, they just take me down. I'm kind of tired anyway. So uh, it is what it is. So I'm going to share this with you tonight. What I have when I got up this morning, um, you will put on my heart to be thinking about the eclipse that's coming up. He did the same thing uh, before the first one that happened. And I'm, we're going to look at a video that I had pulled up, but it's gone away since <laughs> I hooked up. No, it's on my other computer. It's got to be over there. Anyway, um, I started thinking about the eclipse, just like the first one. And uh, it's, it's still a couple of years from now. But um, in my analysis, it was very accurate in what was to come, i.e. Uh, the pandemic happening. I didn't know it was going to be called COVID, but, but I suspected something was coming. And uh, I turned out to be accurate. Well, the same thing happened today. Thinking about this, this next eclipse, and I'm talking about the second one between the two. Uh, it's it's seven year period, okay, and between the, uh, you know, it, there's a couple of blood moons in the center. It's, it's very significant ones too. Anyway, um, it all means something. The whole Maserat is telling us a story, and and who is communicating with us? He's telling us what's going to happen. Uh, Argue with the Bible, if you will. That's what it says. So I've been thinking about it all day. Got into this table that I had a little while. It is about the Eclipse 2024. And I think Scott's got a little more information to share on what he has found in uh, his conversation and dialogue with the group that he's a, a member of where they talk about these kind of things. And, um, yeah, so you were telling me, Scott, just before I went, went recording, um, but you found a few more things. Um, yeah, well, I, as you had, as you had mentioned, um, there are two sisters, a brother and myself who have come to the conclusion that there's a connection with these eclipses and a, an earthquake, a coming quake. And we've all come to the same, same conclusion through different avenues. Of course, um, I've, come to this conclusion by looking um, at the Bible codes and um, another sister has come to this conclusion just by a dream and a vision. And <clears throat> there's a brother that has um, actually put together a presentation and he's given this presentation on uh, various podcasts and stuff, um, kind of crunching all the data involving what we call these um, all of the all of Tav eclipses and, I'll go ahead and share my screen and it's it'll become very obvious to anybody who knows who's familiar with the Hebrew alphabet that why we call this the Aleph the Aleph Tav eclipse. Oops, let me go backwards here. And as you can see, you know, here's the Aleph. I mean it's turned upright and um here's the Tav, or you can actually see another Tav right here. And um before, you know, before I get into the codes, um, I actually found out some really amazing uh, information um, regarding, regarding this, because this has happened before historically. And it involves an Indian chief by the name of Tecumseh. I'm sure everybody's heard the name. And, you know, and that's really important. This is a conversation I've had with Walter about yeah. um, what's happened before will happen again. OK, this is a biblical concept, you guys, and uh, we're going to be diving more into that with um, some of the other code research with Walter. Um, but this is a point that we had been talking about in this past week when I was down in Florida, brother. It's happened before. It's going to happen mm. again. And it happens frequently sometimes. Yeah. And uh, I was amazed to find this out because I wasn't aware of this when when I when this was revealed to me in the codes. Uh, I. I wasn't aware that this had happened before, but 
um, this Indian chief Tecumseh, him and his brother were considered prophets. And it says right here, in 1802, Tecumseh had predicted the ground would shake. And on December 16th, 1811, the new Madrid earthquake hit, causing a seismic shift. Um, and this so is what is that? Like, that is um, 1802 to 1811. Yeah, well, 1802 is when he gave the prophecy. And 1811 is when it happened. Is when it happened. But check this out. It gets even better. In 1806, in the middle sometime, halfway halfway through that time period, there was an eclipse wow. that went through America. And it takes this just about takes the same path right. as as uh the, 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 the next yeah, yep. this is gonna happen on April 8th, 2024. Yep. But you've also you've also you also got something that's going in the, in the other direction to make the olive um, of 2023, October 14th. So it's yes. actually three eclipses. Um, when I first did my my video, I only talked about two, the, the, these first two. And then it was later that you guys come out with this other eclipse that's going to happen. All of these are very significant. Mm -hmm. Who is telling us something? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we believe that, you know, based on what's happened historically and all these other witnesses that are coming together, something similar is going to happen. And, you know, it even says, it tells us in Revelation that there's going to be earthquakes. And uh, he even tells us in Matthew 24 that there's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. And um, if you like, we can just, we could just get to the codes real quick and go ahead, brother. Um, I can share how this was revealed to me in the codes. I've kind of shared this before. I'm sure there's some of you out there that have seen this, but um, this is all surrounding an anomaly in one verse in, in Exodus, uh, chapter 9, verse 31. And this is during the, the judgments on Mitzrayim, and the, uh, during the hell judgment specifically. Uh, in this verse, something really amazing happens. Um, it says, and the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bald. And, of course, when you read Hebrew from right to left, um, this is how this will read. But when you read it backwards, uh, right here, you'll have the year 2025. Hey, Tao, Shem, hey, hey. This word right here is the earthquake. And which is barley. It, uh, the word barley backwards is earthquake. Um, here it happens again. The barley, and when you read it backwards, it's the earthquake. And then you here you have 2025 again. Reasonably, if I drop the hay over here, and if I drop the hay over here, I just have 2020. So I have a span of five years here. So it's giving me a time frame. Um, yeah. Well, that takes you from the middle of that would be during the blood moons that happened, yeah. uh, and those were over Hawaii. If you guys remember directly over my head, I made some comments about that. It was in this, the sign for Ephraim. Um, so th all these signs are for us, and that's remarkable that you got in that uh, verse right there yeah. the actual Hebrew letters that represent the years. Yeah, and yeah, you'll see anomalies like this all spread throughout the text. I've seen them, Chris has seen them, you've seen them. I know um, our um, constituents uh, um, over in Judah have seen them as well. Um, but I decided to search this out um, in the Bible Code Matrix, and um, this is what uh, this is what I came up with. Um, You'll see that very same verse right here in the, the multiple colors uh, in this purple and orange here and blue. That's this very same verse, Exodus 9.31. And this is at a very narrow page margin at 323 characters. And um, all of the data points come together. You have, uh, you have Eclipse. You have 2024 going through here, but you have um, at the same page with you have the word Madrid and you have the word America. 
right here, right close to each other, um, just a few columns over. And at the same page with you also have the word earthquakes. <laughs> so it's giving the indication that um, it's going to be more than one. And um, what happened back in 1811 and 1812, there was actually a, a handful of quakes. It wasn't just one. There was actually a series of three or four quakes when the new Madrid went off the first time and it actually rang the church bells in New York. And there was, you know, hundreds of after aftershocks, they say. Um, but, I mean, check this out. You have uh, darkness in the land of Mitzrayim. All the land was in darkness in the plain text. Um, there was a heavy darkness in the land of Mitzrayim. Again, in the land of Mitzrayim, warning. Um, 2017, of course, that's when the first eclipse happened. Um, Exodus 10, 2. Off the top of my head, I'm not I can't quite remember. Yeah. I mean, tell in years of thy son and thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt and the signs which I have done among them. Okay, yeah. So the eclipse is the obvious sign that's taking place. Um, the sign in the wilderness in all the land of Mitzrayim. And then you have where the eclipse is taking place. You have Illinois appearing vertically in the, in the code. And then you have Missouri, which First is. First of all, incredible. let me just say how incredible it is. This is at a 323. Three. That is a very small area. Yeah, yeah. All the vertical anomalies that you got reminds me of, you know, one of my students that used to be really good at, where well, she still is. Uh, mm -hmm. She still can do that find all these relative terms that are vertical in such a small area um, with corresponding verses. Um, so what it says to me is pay attention. Yeah. I've done this long enough to know when to pay attention. This is an ephod and who is communicating? He's communicating with the stars. When you can see the two come together and others, other things, other people, other dreams, visions, all these things, it starts painting a, a very accurate picture of what is about to take place, right? This is how we discern these things. So um, you've got harbinger as well, vertical in there. Yes, the harbinger. Right next to the sign. A harbinger is a sign. It's a warning yeah. is what it is. So you got a mm -hmm. warning, a sign that's a warning. And then the plain text where it says harbinger, it says toward heaven. Right here, toward heaven, there was a heavy darkness in the lands of Mitzrayim, the harbinger. Uh, so I bet this, you the word Nibiru is in this table. It's now, probably there. Yeah, it is there. there. It is there, and it's connected to Wormwood. It's happened before. This is the very same thing that blotted out the sun for six hours. No, excuse me, three hours when Yeshua was on the cross. A lunar eclipse is only seven minutes you guys and furthermore at the time of passover the, the moon is on the other side of the earth it was impossible for it to be a lunar eclipse this was nibiru aka wormwood this very same thing that yahuwah used to call the deluge and many other catastrophic events that's happened in the world this this has been confirmed over and over in the bible so scott when you when you get a chance i'd be interested to know where nibiru ends up there and look for all three spellings of that okay it can be spelled three different ways but all are correct so um wow man i'm sorry i didn't want you know no you're fine I, you um, got missouri in there as well illinois and missouri missouri yeah and it's it's exactly where they crosses. intersect right here right in that area on the border of uh missouri in Illinois, and come to find out that this area right here is called Little Egypt or Cairo. The the very southern tip of Missouri, there's a little town called Cairo. Um, I mean, it's amazing. It says darkness in the land of Mitzrayim. And uh, crazy, man. I know. That's an, that's, that's, where, that's an eclipse. 
Yeah. You know, so so there's been a, some some earthquakes here. I've been sitting. I felt two sitting on my mom's couch. Yeah, right over in here. Yeah, that's over in, in South Carolina. And if you yeah. Google that, the number of earthquakes that are taking place in Elgin, South Carolina. Now that that eclipse that happened goes over that spot, but it is a hot spot right now. Geologists are uh, watching it. It is indeed swarms that are happening. And I kid you not, man, I was sitting on the couch here and I felt it kind of go up and down, very small, not enough to make anything move, but I could feel it. And it happened once before that. And I, I, told, I said to my mom, I think I felt an earthquake and she would tell me about Elgin. So I don't know if that's got anything to do with the Madrid, but there is a fault line that runs through all of the, the those mountains and up and down the East Coast as well. I mean, there was an, an earthquake a few years ago Remember, remember the crosses that fell off the uh, the churches in in yeah. Washington yeah. and stuff like that, and it did some damage to some of the monuments and stuff. There's a fault line that runs all the way up and down. Mm -hmm. So, I um, would imagine they're all over the United States, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, places that don't normally feel earthquakes suddenly start feeling earthquakes, and after we get a series of signs. I think the earthquake itself is a sign, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. Who can do who can do that but but Yah? Right. He's the only one that controls the sun, moon, and stars and can do those kinds of things. And this these this ecliptic line right here crosses all the major fault lines in America. Um that's crazy, man. And see that yeah. if you watch suspicious observers, the sun, moon, and stars has an effect on the earth and it's, it's um, electromagnetic um, energy. And it called, there's earthquakes cause when there's a planetary involvement somewhere. This is, this is fact. BP Earthwatch, BP Earthwatch used to call it like clockwork. Whenever there was alignments and stuff like that with planets, there would be a major earthquake. And he was, he, he was most of the time right about it. And all um, that, um What's his name? Um, I can't even think of his name right now. He does all earthquakes. Dutch Sands. Dutch Sands. Dutch Sands. Who, Dutch incidentally, Sands. Scott, I don't know if you've been paying attention, he was hacked many times yeah, yeah. here recently. So he's gone through some hacking, too. So yeah, that's why That's why he hasn't been coming on much. His, all his computer gets hacked every, as soon as he gets a new one. That's yeah. aggressive, man. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. He's had the he's had the boys show up at his house. <laughs> Um, they definitely don't like him for some reason. <laughs> well, he's pointing those that, the, the scientific stuff out about that. Yeah, a lot of Christians are watching earthquakes and volcanoes because it's it's prophetic. Yeah. So uh, with this table, I just took the same data points and I looked in the prophets, and sure enough, it shows up in Jeremiah where it says a great earthquake in the land of the north. Um. And when you look this up in, in chapter 10, verse 22, it translates as a great commotion. But the word for commotion or noise is the same word for earthquake. And um, you'll see the same data points come together. America, Illinois, uh, Eclipse, 2024, uh, Abid. Um, which you'll find um, in this verse, or the anomaly is in the uh, verse that had the, the two years in there. Yeah, right here. The so that's a significant day. That's that's the beginning of the year. Yep, that's when the that's when the eclipse happens. <laughs> um, it's on the very first day of the sun. Um, uh, Madrid. Oy, oy, in oy. the in the end of days, um, and shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Mm. E eclipse. Um, over here, I don't have it annotated, but you have again. You have uh, the year twenty twenty four, and you have the day, um, the first of Nisan, Aleph Nisan, oy. right right here converging. Um, Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim, 
So, and this this is at a, a relatively small width of uh, fourteen hundred and fifty two characters. So, yeah, um, relatively small again, like the other one. I was not fourteen hundred and fifty two. Yeah, yep. Another small one. Yep. So, and it's and it's look at how closely all the terms converge together, uh, just like they do in this table. So, very compact. You know, not really spread out. Um, and so it's kind of, uh, you know, it was kind of an eye opener for me and, um, it just, you know, it hits on all cylinders and it's just something that we're watching. You know, we were, we're continuing to, to meet up and, and try to gather more data on this, but, you know, with the historical data and what we're looking at here and, with more witnesses coming forward. Um, We're making analysis. Let's be yes. really clear to anybody who wants to come against us and say Jonathan and, and uh, Scott um, prophesied because that's not right. what's going on here. Okay. This works like an e -fog. Right. Right. You who communicates with it when he wants to convey a message to us, not necessarily something we're supposed to be putting out as prophecy unless he directs us and said like, uh, but with the election, he told me not one finger. He wouldn't lift one finger to stop the steal. And it happened. And that's prophetic. But for this, he's given us data points. And he's given us pro the prophetic script, the prophet's words, and how they coincide together. And we can make an analysis. That was my point with looking at this in 2017 and seeing that we were fixed to, about to come into a seven-year cycle, first uh, eclipse, and then a then a series of blood moons, and then the final one. Uh, excuse me, there's one in 2023 that, that makes an olive, but then the final one that comes back across in April 8, 2024. Um, you was and it's right over America. He's speaking directly to the United States. Okay, so this is a warning to the United States, yeah. A.K.A. Ephraim and Menashe, because it's both here. Yeah. Okay. But it also applies to the world. The world is watching what happens to America. What, what happens to America matters to the rest of the world. I'm not saying that because, you know, anything arrogant. or That's just a fact. And I found something in the scriptures in my table about that fact that the world is watching the judgment that happens um, to this land, uh, the, this land of the north. Right. And they're bewildered. They're 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 amazed. What brought this great evil and this judgment upon this land, right? Well, there are a couple of things. The one thing that, that I do know for sure, this, this country's under judgment, mm -hmm. right? Right. It hasn't fallen uh, completely yet in, in a sense of what I believe is coming, but we're in the throes of it now, right? Um, Jacob's trouble. But he's warning his people. He's telling us what he's going to do. We see that in the scriptures and how these codes co co uh, coincide to that. Now, the interpretation is, is one thing. It's not open to interpretation. We can give our analysis of, of it, but it's in hindsight that we'll know more, right. more on what it means. Right. So this all could, we can do is speculate. And this, this, this could be a similar pattern, um, you know, compared to what happened historically, this, this doesn't mean that this has, has to happen exactly in 2025 or 2024. Exactly, you know, right. Uh, back in the 1800s, it took another six years after the fact. Yeah. And yeah. not not only that, we've, I, you know, we, we've got discrepancies in the calendars. Right. You know, this could be a few years off. Um, nobody really knows for sure, you know, and, and of course, you know, when it comes to calendars, this is kind of a controversial thing. So this may not be exactly, you know, uh, uh, to the year, to the day or, or whatever, but. All you're doing is of, showing the data points. It's in hindsight. Yeah, it's when the yeah. event takes place. If it takes place, we'll come back and look at this yep. and we see how accurate it was for, you know, good example is for, for more than a year before Siding Spring had an encounter with Mars, the code was showing a, a collision, okay? But Jonathan was saying there's going to be a deep impact. There's going to be a deep impact because I was looking for wormwood that happened. 
And so this is my interest in comets and things that are happening in the stars. Now, now what I learned from this is don't add to or take away from, right? This is a big deal. Attention to detail. The code specifically shows a collision, not a deep impact. There's two different things. You can have something that kind of glances off one another, and that's exactly what happened. But I was telling my subscribers a deep impact was going to happen, and there was going to be, this is possibly Wormwood, right? I put myself way too out there, and you would have taught me something in that. Some temperance and some discipline in, in the interpretation of it, right? And so if anybody has noticed, it's been with me long enough, you, we, you've seen that we've become more accurate in uh, some of the things that we're seeing. There's some things that hasn't happened. Like I expected Biden to be out of office already because he was going to resign. And what I got to admit to you is I found evidence in the codes that he's still around in 2024. So that means he rides this thing out. But here's, a, here's an interesting point. Biden, um, Biden's about to get a visitor on the 7th just a couple of days from now, from Obama. Obama's made an appointment to come to the, to the White House. And I got a good feeling that it's got something to do with, to, you know, what, what they're going to do about Trump in this next election, okay? Mm -hmm. Which they're, I can't find anywhere where he's coming back in the code program that I got. I've left it open and I've said this to, to students and Scott knows this, it's possible it may be in the Peshitta. But I can't find Trump anywhere, not even in this table I'm about to show you guys about this eclipse in 2024. Trump's not there. But Biden and Obama's there. So, um, you know, the codes have been very accurate. It's the interpretation of the finder, of the code searcher, or anybody else searching codes that's in question. Um, I still see some of the codes that Michael Drawson found that are very accurate, but his assessment of it his, his analysis were way off, right? So, yeah, just to, to be clear, we are not making prophecy. We're not prophesying anything. We're sharing data points and some of the things that we've found. And if anything, we're analysts of this thing that we're looking at. So, yeah, I have to put that disclaimer out there, Scott, or they'll claim. We're oh, yeah, absolutely. Something. I mean, it's we're, we're just we're just kind of, we're putting together a hypothetical thing, but this just it's some really interesting witnesses come together and it just we feel compelled to just give the warning. Uh, and that's right. all. Yeah. So with that, uh hand it over to you, brother. That's that's what I have. All right. So I'm gonna switch computers and um share what I have on um the it, the, the access term is eclipse twenty twenty four. So give me a just a second to, to switch over there. All right, you got can. All right, I'm gonna have to turn. To, hold on just a second. Oh, I gotta remember to turn the sound down for for the other uh, computer. Anyway, all right, let me share screen. I want to share one thing before we get into the table. We're gonna look at um, what happened in 2020. Excuse me, 2017. I did this video. Some of you remember, might remember this. Um, this was August 3rd, 2017. And so the eclipse was going to take place on the 21st. And so a few days before that, I'm thinking about this thing. Well, I had been thinking about this, this eclipse for several months and looking at the historical relevance or why um, or what Yahuwah is saying and what, what is taking place before. And so I want to play the first few minutes of it. I do, you know, when I, when I play these things back, I, I, you know, I see sometimes that I misspeak. So you'll see that a couple of times. I say World War II when I mean World War I. Um, I've rarely ever see my videos played back. And so um, I'm sure that I misspeak a lot. So uh, you guys have to, you know, give a little bit of grace where it's needed. So just keep that in mind when, I, when you see this. I am the code searcher, Jonathan. And uh, can you guess what I want to talk to you about? 
That's right. This upcoming solar eclipse. Um, I don't mean to make light of it either, because uh, historically, uh, the ramifications of um, this kind of event usually uh, is very profound. So, uh, please, allow me to take a few minutes of your time uh, to show you a few things that I've come across and what I've discovered in the codes. Now, there are, uh, I don't know, a hundred of you that saw a video I uploaded um, around three o'clock in the morning and I very promptly took it down. <clears throat> and I just want to explain that. Um, when you stops me three times from doing a video or putting up a table, I know it's very clear there's something else he wants to show me. So the table I had was incomplete, uh, and that is why the video came down. Uh, and indeed, he showed me some, some more things uh, that were extremely, um, well, convincing. Um, if you allow me to show you this to you, I think um, you'll see something really profound here as well. Uh, so, without further ado, let's just look at uh, solar eclipses historically. And, um, you know, I want to thank Brother Steve at Discover Ministries, who um, brought this to my attention in one of his recent presentations. August 21st, 1914. Now, the solar eclipse we're going to see is August 24th, uh, 2017, so roughly 100 years ago, uh, thereabouts. There was a solar eclipse that went across um, Europe, and not too long after that, folks, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I think World War II was just getting started, about two months in, um, and then there was um, a solar eclipse. Now, this is always, always throughout time, have been a bad omen or some sort of, a, of, of sign from the Most High. Uh, he's telling us something. The scriptures are very clear that he uses signs and wonders from the sun, moon, and stars to communicate with the Maseroth. Now, at World War I, um, some nine mil million combatants Killed. I misspoke there. There's a lot more than that. Civilians died uh, after that. 60 so million. That consideration. It was a solar eclipse, a very profound one. And uh, then World War II, excuse me, World War I. Uh, incidentally, there, there was one also in a World War II. Uh, even greater casualties there. Uh, but before we go to World War II, um, June 8, 1918, uh, the path that you're going to see here in August is the very same path that went across the United States in 1918. Now, why is this significant? Um, well, at the time that this went across, America was entering into what would, would be the worst pandemic uh, the world had ever seen up until that time. Some 500 million people um, were affected by this, and some 100 million um, died. Uh, I think it's somewhere around 670,000 Americans. So, at the time of the crossing of this, um, this eclipse, America was just getting started with um, a plague that was striking the nation. And, and this uh, thing went right across, just as it's going to do um, in just less than a month from now. So... Um, that's August 21st, 2017, the very same path. Now, does this mean anything? Does it mean there's going to be war? Is there going to be a plague? Uh, what's going to happen? I'm not saying something's going to happen on the day, folks, please. I'm not making any predictions here. I'm making an educated um, observation here. And then I'm, I'm about to show you something in the scriptures that the Father put there 3,500 years ago. Because the access term we're going to look at is Eclipse 777. Which All right, and the rest was history. Um, some 149,000 views later, you guys, um, many people saw that and saw what happened. So, it, you know, I even say that in, in this video that we just saw, um, that it was a, my analysis 
Same thing right now. This is my analysis. And what I'm about to show you, I called it very close. <laughs> it didn't happen on the day of, but it happened a few, few years later. And in the middle of um, the eclipse block, you know, the seven year block that happened, it was the middle point. And what did I find in the codes there? This was Jacob's trouble. Okay, so this, this seven year time was blocked off at the three and a half year mark as, as a marking time. And the code revealed the, the, the COVID code and the America on lockdown um, and a couple of others, Jacob's trouble. I looked up Jacob's trouble and it was directly connected to this, this plague that was released. So here we are. September 4, 2022. Just a little ways away from uh, the next eclipse. And this is that access term. Are you able to see that, Scott? I can't. I got the sound down. So if you're there, I can't even hear you. Anyway, I'm hoping that you can hear my sound. Otherwise, we won't hear. Yeah, my sound's up. We won't hear this. So the access term is um, the eclipse 2024. All right. And right across the top, we've got a, we got ma'ot, which means it's, it's a sign from a sign. Right. And look at that mishpat judgment. I didn't even realize that until now. That's crazy. I see mishpat in there. Say judgment sign. Okay. Um, one of the first words I found in there was melchema, which is war. So it's here one time as an ELS, also in the plain text here. And this is abnormal for that word. I usually find it three times, but uh, it's only here twice this time. I did find the word Nibiru. And it's, it's very small skip right there, but it's also up at top. Yeah, abacus effect and in reverse. Noon bet yod resh vav. There is another one other way to spell that with two yods. Could be a yod on either side of that bet. Um, the famine in yellow. It's also here. The famine. That this is this three things Yahuwah was was showing me since the very first eclipse was three things were coming. Famine, war, and plagues. And they're all upon us, you guys. They're all upon us in one degree or, or another. And we'll get worse as we get closer to 2024. And that's when things shift gears. This, this by the way, is when I believe we'll go to war. It's 2024. I don't think it'll happen till then. That's my analysis. I'm not making a prediction and saying... You know, it's a prophecy or anything like that. That's just my prediction. And right here in the white, it says famine is coming. Rough bow. Famine comes. Okay. This is a judgment, you guys. I've got to tell you, I could not find Donald Trump's name in any version of it in this table. But what I did find was Biden and Obama. Both are here. Now, why is that significant? You guys, I just said a little while ago, you know, on the 7th, he's going to the White House to meet with Biden. And if you didn't know, this guy is the one running the, the show from the background anyway, not this guy. This guy couldn't tie his shoes. You think he's really running this government? This guy told you what he was going to do in the interview that he did. Said if he could run the country from his basement in his jogging suit, with an earpiece, he would do that. Well, guys, he was telling you what he was doing. That's how he's doing it. We're not in the, uh, this guy's administration. This is Obama 3.0. That's just a fact. And the codes reveal that he is a heavy influence in what is taking place, but he's also 
the one in this is this goes back both of his his terms we were seeing judgment we were seeing a man of sin son of perdition in this person but you can also see it in this person is the same spirit you guys america or excuse me the united states is encoded right through there so this is a sign over the united states All eyes are on the United States. We're the example that you was making. Also have um, plagues that that are that is here as well. It goes off the page that way. I think With the green letters. <clears throat> so we got plagues, war, and famine all in one table, but also some a series of. Very interesting verses. This is in the prophets for the most part. End of days is here. That is a benchmark in time. We're going to read that. This is the fall of Babylon, you guys. Look where it runs, right through the middle of this, where famine is. So go, let's go take a look at that first. I want to read those verses to you so you can see for yourself how the plain text correlates and plays a role with the ELS code. So we are in this, this last uh, verse 49, uh, chapter 49, verse 39 um, is where we find the end of days. But then it goes into chapter one of, um, excuse me, verse one of chapter 50, which is the fall of Babylon. Okay, so let's go there first. But it shall come to pass in the latter days. That I will bring again the captivity of Elam, saith Yahuwah. And then it goes into the word of you that Yahuwah spoke against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Now, take in consideration the context of what we're looking at. We're not looking at the context of the plain text. This is the spiritual Babylon, if you will, or a representation of that in the United States. Because what's happened before is going to happen again. What's, what's happened to Babylon will happen to anything like Babylon. And if you ever walked around the, the city of Washington and looked, it's a combination of Babylon and Rome and Greece all in one. So anytime you see the, those words, Greece or Babylon or the Syrian or anything, it's all, in other words, Daniel's um, statue all those kingdoms, right? Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard, publish and conceal not, say Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, Merodrach, Merodach is broken into pieces, her idols are, are confounded, her images are broken into pieces. For out of the north cometh up a nation against her, and shall make her land desolate. Now, I don't know if you know anything about ICBMs, but they're, if, if they're fired upon us from Russia, this is going to come across the North Pole over Canada. All right? So for out of the North, there cometh up a nation against her. If you, if you, if you say this was the, the map here, you got the North Pole. Down south here is the United States. You could go over... Canada over the North Pole, North, North Pole and into Russia, in other words. So that's where a threat from Russia would come, not, not necessarily from the sea. That's going to be submarines from other countries. But that's where the ICBMs are, are aimed at us, from the north. And none shall dwell there. They shall remove and they shall depart both man and beast. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come and they and the children of Judah together going and weeping. They shall go and seek you with their Elohim. They shall ask the way to, to Zion with their face thitherward, saying, come, let us join ourselves unto Yahuwah with a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray, and they have turned. Oh, I went too far.
They have turned them away to the mountains. They've gone from the mountain to hill, and they've forgotten their resting place. All that have found them have devoured them. And their adversary said, we offend not because they have sinned against Yahuwah, the, inhabit the habitation of justice, even Yahuwah, the hope of their fathers. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goats before the flocks. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations. Right? Keep that in mind. There's going to be a coalition against the United States and against Biden. He is a failed president. Judgment's coming to this nation. I'm, I'm going to reveal to you now what, what has been shown to me, you guys, as an invasion of the United States. China on the West Coast and Iran and um, Russia on the East Coast with submarines. And it's not only me he's revealed this to. I believe the same thing was re revealed to Henry Groover, but also um, Dimitri Dudeman. From the North Country, and they shall set them themselves in array against her. From thence, she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man, and none shall return in vain. We're talking about missiles here, you guys. And if you want to see the array, that will be submarines all the way down the coast of the United States, even into the Gulf. And Chaldeans shall be a, shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith Yahuwah, because ye were glad, because ye rejoiced. O ye destroyers of mine heritage, because ye have grown fat as the heifer at grass and bellow as bulls, your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of wrath of Yahuwah, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at her plagues. Put yourself in array against Babylon round about all ye that bend the bow and shoot at her. No, spare no arrows, for she hath sinned against Yahuwah. Shout against her round, round about. She hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of Yahuwah to take vengeance upon her. She hath done, and as she has done, do unto her. Look at that again. As she has done, do unto her. That's midah connected midah. This is a biblical concept I've been telling you guys about. What we've done to people will be done to us. And this is why I've, I've said two nuclear weapons will be dropped in the United States because we did it to Japan. And it wasn't just. Cut off the sower from Babylon. And him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. You see what's happening? It is the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword shall turn everyone to his people. And they shall flee everyone to his own land. Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. The king of Assyria hath devoured him. And his last... And last, this Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had broken his bones. Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah Zavod, the Elohim of Israel, behold, I will punish the king of Babylon in his land. I will punish the king of Assyria. Now, if you guys remember anything about the codes that I've done before, we have found a direct connection between the king of Assyria and Obama. He is the Assyrian spiritually. And I will bring again Israel into his habitation. Now, we're not talking about the state of Israel. We're talking about Israel and Diaspora. All the Hebrews that are in the United States, you guys. Again, we're not talking about the context of Jeremiah's words as he wrote them. We're looking at a code table where there, there's a context to the code. In those days and at that time, said Yahuwah, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah 
and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. Go up against the land of Mitzurim, of, of Marathim, even against it, and the inhabitants of Picad. Waste and utterly destroy after them, saith you, and do according to all that I have commanded thee. A sound of the battle is in the land, and of great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth is cut asunder and broken. How Babylon has become a desolation among the nations. I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was was and thou wast not aware. Thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Adonai. And Yahuwah opened his armory, and hath brought forth the weapons of its indignation, for this is the work of Yahuwah Elohim Zavot. In the land of the Chaldeans, come against her from the utmost border, open her storehouse, and cast up as heaps and utterly and and destroy her utterly let nothing be left slay her bullocks and let them go down to the slaughter woe unto them for their day has come so this is judgment this is the judgment day now i'm not saying that's what's going to happen to the united states but we need to take into you know consideration what has happened before, what's happened to Babylon, will happen to the wicked nations that you would judge us. And I submit to you that the United States is a wicked nation, very similar to Babylon and many other ancient um, civilizations. So let's go to this next one I got highlighted, which is in Ezekiel 27th chapter. I want you to take a look at what's going on. Again, judgment is taking place. That is a common theme in this, this, whole, this whole table. So 27, I want to back up and just so we can get an idea of what's happening, what he was doing. And they of Persian of Lud and of, of Phut were in thine army, thy men of war, and they hang the shield and the helmet in thee and set thee forth in comeliness. The men of Avrad, and thine army were upon the walls round about, and the Gamadines were in thy towers, and they hang their shields upon the walls that are round about, and they've made thy beauty perfect. Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of multitude of all of thy riches with silver and iron, tin and lead. They traded in thy fairs, Javan, Tubal, Meshach. They were all, uh, they were thy merchants, and they traded the person's of men and vessels of brass in thy market. So we're talking about the economy, you guys, if you don't understand, the, this is all representing the economy. And they of the house of Togarma traded in thy fairs with horses and horsemen and mules. The men of Dedan were thy merchants. Many isles were the merchandise of thy hand. And they brought thee for present horns of ivory and, and ebony. Syria was thy merchant by reason of multitude for the wares of thy making. They occupied in the, thy fairs with emeralds, purple, and broidered work, and fine linen with coral and agate. Judah, in the land of Israel, they were thy merchants, and they traded in thy market wheat of Meneth and the Penang, and honey and oil and balm. Damascus was thy merchant in the multitude of wares of thy making for the multitude of all. Riches in the wine of Helbron and white wool. Dan also and, and Javan going to and fro, occupied in thy fairs, bright iron, Cassia, Calamus were thy market. Dedan was thy merchant in precious clothes for chariots. Arabia and all the princes of Kedar, they occupied thee in, with, in lambs and rams and goats, and these were, the, were they thy merchants. The merchants of Shiva and Rama, they are thy merchants, and they occupied in the fairs with the chief of all spices and with precious stones and gold. So again, we're talking, he's talking about the economy, Haran, world economy, Haran and Cana and Eden, the merchants of Shiva, Asher and Chilmod 
were thy merchants, and these were thy merchants in all sorts of things, in blue clothes, broidered work, and in chests of rich apparel, bound with cords and made of cedar among thy merchandise. The ships of Tarshish did sing of thee in thy mer in market, and thou was replenished and made er and made very glorious in the midst of the seas. Thy rowers have brought thee into great waters. And east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. Thy riches and thy affairs and thy merchants and thy mariners and thy pilots and thy caulkers. And the occupier of the merchandise and all the men of war that are in thee. And in all that company which is in the midst of thee shall fall in the midst of the seas in the day of thy ruin. All right. So it's all coming to an end. Who is going to judge it? The suburbs shall shake at the sound of the cry of thy pilots. Okay, so we're going to have earthquakes. And all that handle the oar, the mariners, and all the pilots of the sheep, sea shall come down from their ships, and they shall stand upon the land. You know what happens when they're, when they're all, all of a sudden they're on their ships, and then they're standing on the land? That means the sea is withdrawn. There's a, there's a tsunami about to happen. And there shall cause their voice to be heard against thee, and it shall cry bitterly, and shall cast up dust upon their heads, and shall wallow themselves in the ashes. And they shall make themselves utterly bald for thee, and gird them with sackcloth, and they shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. And in their wailing, there shall take up lamentation for thee and lament over thee, saying, what is, the, what is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? When thy wares went forth out of the seas, thou fillest many people and, thou, and didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and thy merchandise. And in the time thou, did, thou shalt be broken by the seas, in the depths of the waters, thy merchandise and all thy company in the midst shall fall. And all the inhabitants of the isle shall be astonished at thee, and their kings shall be sore afraid, and shall be troubled in their countenance. The merchants among the people shall hiss at thee, and thou shalt be in terror, and never shall be any more. I mean, that's 27 running right through there talking about basically the world economy, okay? It will come to ruin. All right? So we saw the fall of Babylon right above that, and then the economy fall. So, so then we got this uh, fragment from uh, Zephaniah that has Mohammed hinged to it with the mem there, Okay. So I want to read that, and we could read, we could have just gone on and on down the line, but for the sake of time, we can't do that. I, I just pointed out the, the very strong ones um, to read for you. That's Zephaniah chapter 1. Make sure I did this right. Word of the word of Yahuwah, which came to Zephaniah, the son of Cushi, the son of Gedaliah, Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hiskiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, and the king of Judah. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith Yahuwah. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith Yahuwah. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place. And the name of the Cherimims, Cherimims, with the priest, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and swear by Yahuwah and swear by Malchim. And they that, that are turned back from Yahuwah and, the, and those that have not sought Yahuwah, nor 
inquire for him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Adonai Elohim, for the day of Yahuwah is at hand. For, the, for Yahuwah hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath hid his guest. And it shall come to pass in that day, and, and this is interesting. Let me just point this out, because before his wrath, he's going to gather us and hide us from his indignation. And it says here, and he hath, he hath bid he hath bid his guests. I thought it was said hid his guests, but he hath bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of Yahuwah's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children, and all as such are clothed with strange apparel. In the same day, I also will punish all those that leap upon the threshold which fill their master's house with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahuwah, that there shall be a noise of a cry of, from the fish gate and a howling from the second and great crashing from the hills. How ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut down. What did we just hear? What did you see the, right up here? The merchants were all wiped out, right? When the, when the waters recede and there's ships sitting on the land, that means there's, a, there's tsunamis. That word is probably in here somewhere. But it was talking about the merchants and what's going to fail, right? And right here, the merchant people are cut, cut down. And they that bear silver are cut off. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled, settled on their leaves, that say in their heart, he will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore, their good shall become booty, and their houses a desolation, and they shall build houses and not inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, but not drink of the wine thereof. The great day of Yahuwah is near. It is near, and hasten greatly, even the voice of the day of Yahuwah and the mighty man shall, shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men. And they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against Yahuwah. And their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as dung. Neither shall neither their silver nor their gold be able to deliver them in the day of Yahuwah's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy. For he shall even make a speedy riddance of all of them that dwell in the land. And that is the end of chapter one, but you can just read on, gather yourself together. <clears throat> oh, nation not desired. So I did find the word destroyer because of uh, the word Nibiru here. So this is, a, this is a word that would be searched, destroyer, but have a look at what's running right through it. The, the Chachamim, the stars, so Planet X, the Viru, or the Destroyer, and then what does it say here? Let's go look. So, so the, the Kakamim, the stars, caught my eye. I didn't highlight all of it. It was just time-consuming, so we'll just go there. So we're in, in Daniel, the eighth chapter at this point, and I, I want to wrap it up right here because of time, and let's just see what the context of the code is. And it waxed great. And we're talking about the little horn uh, and two, two rams that are coming to get together. But the, the fragment that stood out is even to the host of heaven. And it was cast down to the host and of the star and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of the sanctuary was cast down and the host was given against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. This is end time prophecy, but the, the fact that the host was cast down, we're talking about 
uh, in the stars, cast down to the ground. So what is that? <laughs> it's things hitting the earth. Daniel 8 is very prophetic for the end time. So that's what I got for the um, Eclipse 2024 code. Along with what Scott's presented, you guys, please take into consideration that uh, information. Um, this is coming upon us. So, you know, I think we're going to see things wax worse and worse um, in our nation. I, I got to be honest with you guys. I can't find anywhere. In the, in the code program I'm looking at with Trump coming back. And I did say before, uh, during the time of um, Biden stealing the election, that it was a very possible Trump was going to come back. But it, if it was encoded, it's going to be in the Peshitta. And someone said they have found that. But I can't find his name in something like this. You know, with 2024, that's... It's just around the corner. That's when the election will be, is that year. So there's a strong connection to Biden and Obama in here. So that's a little concerning. I don't know what that means. It's just there. But the, the one thing that does stand out is, is Trump's name is nowhere in this, and not even along the cylinder. If I rotate the cylinder on either side, I can't find his name. So he's not even close to this thing. So that kind of stands out. So that's what I got for you guys. Um, please be in prayer, especially for this ministry. Um, a lot of us going through the threshing or the fire of affliction, and it is not uh, pleasant. So keep us in prayer. So until the next video, you guys, that's all I have for you. Shalom, and may He bless you and make His face shine upon you.